Hey guys, in uh, this and a few coming videos, I'm going to be explaining Presence, which is the instrument loader program inside of Studio One Five. And uh, to begin with here, let's just uh, start by opening up Presence. So we have an open session here, and I'm going to go to my browser window down in the corner here, and then I'm just go going to drag and drop Presence that I'm finding here into the lane over here. And that's actually all you have to do to open up Presence. Now we have Presence open, and this is the place where you are then able to load and uh, play around with different instruments that come uh, pre-stocked with Studio One Five. So let's start by opening up a preset. And we open up presets by clicking on the lane that you see up here. And then we have here our selection of different kinds of instruments. Anything from bass to keyboards to organs to percussion. Um, basically, just a very varied selection of uh, the, the kinds of instruments that you could uh, be need in need of uh, when you're starting to make your production. So let's just, uh, for the sake of uh, the example here, to try to load an instrument. I quite like the pianos that they come uh, stuck with Studio One. So I'm going to go into the folder here and choose a piano that I'm interested in playing around with. So first I go to basic here and I try to open up this preset here. So now as I click, you see that there's a little uh, a number down here that's loading. This is the size of the sample files that are included in this instrument. And now that the instrument is open, this uh, square here in the middle is the place where you're going to see the first things that indicate what kind of instrument this is and also different options that you can tweak and play around with to change the sound of the instrument. But let's just listen to the instrument here. So this is a beautiful sounding piano. And uh, as I said before, we have some options here. I'm not going to go through all of them because they differ from instrument to instrument. But in this case, for example, one thing that we can do is to change the setting here called velocity curve. When I go ahead and pull down the velocity curve, try to listen to the difference here. So this is with the velocity curve down. When I go ahead and, and put it up, let's listen again. So what we're hearing here is the difference between a very hard attack on the notes and a quite softer attack on the notes. So the setting here gives me a little bit more dynamic, uh, the opportunity to play both soft but also loud if I want to. So let's try to find another instrument just to show you the different kinds of instruments and how you can change between them. So now let's say I'm looking for uh, some kind of percussion. So I go into percussion and I find a marimba here. And I open up the marimba basic. And now again, you see here, marimba basic is opened up inside the square here. But in this case, this instrument does not come with any kind of uh, options for tweaking the sound in here. So in this case, we're just gonna play the instrument. So as you can see, it depends what kind of instrument you're loading. But usually what happens is, as long as the instrument is based on samples, then um, the instrument will load up here, and this will be the first place that you're interested in looking. Now, Presence also includes a synthesizer section, which is seen in the two LFOs over here. And that means that you also have the option to load different kinds of synthesizer sounds inside. So let's go to the synth session here, and try to open up a lead sound. So now as I click here, what you see out to the left here is that LFO1 has been activated. And that means that uh, the sound is being generated from within presence in the LFO here. So let's try to listen to that. So that's basically what you need to know about presence to begin with, is that it's based on samples and in some instances also based on the, the built-in synthesizer that's uh, built into uh, the presence itself. So now that we've taken a look at the way that you can uh, load uh, sounds and samples and synthesizer sounds as well, let's have a look at some of the other options that presence offer for 
further tweaking the sounds. So the first thing that I want to show you here is the filter. The filter is uh, located right here. So right above the box that I showed you before. And you can uh, activate and deactivate the filter by clicking on the button here. So now it is deactivated and now I'm activating the filter. So before I begin, let's let me choose a sound that I think is useful for this example here. Let's try the big glide, for example. Maybe we need a, a sound that's a little more, um, let's see, um, I think a pad would be good actually. So I'm gonna go to my synth session and uh, locate the folder for pads and choose the smooth pad here. So let's listen to that. So here we have a sound that we can then start tweaking inside of the filter. So we activate the filter and uh, the way the filter works is that it automatically cuts off frequencies from either the top to the bottom or to the bottom to the top, from the bottom to the top. And it does that by following how I set this wheel here in the middle. So now as we're starting with no cutoff, it sounds like this, the sound. So as you can hear, the sound has a certain uh, sound to it. And now I'm going to start pulling down the filter. And what you're hearing here is how the filter is slowly sorting out all of the higher frequencies so that then only the lower frequencies are being let through so that those are the frequencies that we're hearing in the sound. And I can sweep this filter up and down given an effect that sounds something like this. So the setting for this cutoff wheel here is uh, located up in this lane here. And uh, you have different options here. They're called LP, LP, and then we have something called BP and something called HP. So the LP stands for low pass. So what this means is that when you put the low pass option on, the filter is going to let through the lower frequencies and cut off the higher frequencies as you move the wheel. So again, to demonstrate, cutting off the higher frequencies, letting through the lower, and back again with the higher frequencies. The next filter here is a variation of the one I just showed you. It's also a low pass, but it has a different, uh, a slightly different, um, say, variation in the curve, as you can see, visualized there. So it sounds uh, sort of the same, but with a slight difference. Again, just listening to it is uh, very helpful. Then we have another low pass filter. And the difference here is that the low pass filter is uh, set to 12 dB instead of 24 dB as we have over here. So that means that this filter is not reducing the high frequencies as much as I move down the wheel. So this was the 12 dB and here we have the 24 dB. So as you can hear, when I go to 24 dB, the reduction is much greater as we go all the way down here. The next kind of filter here is the BP. This stands for band pass. And as you can see again, visualized here, what this filter does is that it separates out a certain um, number of frequencies on the spectrum. So it takes a sort of the middle frequency area and boosts it depending on where you move the cutoff. So it, it sounds like this. So this gives, gives kind of a different kind of a sweeping effect, which can also be very useful depending on what kind of music you're making. The last option we have here 
is the high pass filter. And this is basically just the opposite of the low pass. It means that when uh, I start up here, uh, actually the filter moves the other way. So actually it starts from here. Here we have the full sound. And now it's slowly, slowly separating out the lower sounds or the lower frequencies. So we're only hearing the higher frequencies all the way up until nothing is, is audible because the frequency is, is going so high. So these are the basic uh, filter types that we have here. We also have more options here, but I think I will leave those for a later video. Most of them are variations of the ones I just showed you. So to continue on here, what else do we have inside the filter? The button soft here uh, can be a cause of, of certain confusion, but actually what this means is that uh, the filter here is based on different kinds of analog processing models and uh, putting the soft button on and off basically just changes the, the analog processing built into the filter that the personas made here. So as it says in the manual, there's a slight uh, subtle difference to the sound when you uh, click this on or off. And I think this is something you can experiment with yourself and see if you can hear a difference and which one you, you like the most. Other than that, we have a drive button here. The drive button basically adds some um, distortion and some saturation to the sound. So if we take a listen here, first I'm gonna put up the filter here. You'll be able to hear, uh, definitely if I take it all the way down, it sounds like this. And now I'm gonna pull it all the way up. You can hear there's just a little more, more bite, a little more overdrive on the sound. The next button we have here is called punch, and this uh, adds to the attack of the sound. And it may not be so audible on this particular sound, but on other sounds it should be more, um, more obvious what change this button does. But basically what it does it is that it adds some punch to the beginning of the note in the sound. Next up we have the resonator button and the resonance here is uh, connected to the wheel over here. So basically what you need to imagine is that as I pull down the wheel here, this little uh, line here is indicating at what point I'm cutting off the sound. So right now, right now I'm cutting off at around 3.21 kilohertz and the resonator button then adds resonance to this exact cutoff point. So now that I'm cutting off at 3.10, it sounds like this. If I then go ahead and add resonance to the cutoff, the, so the sound is going to change. So as you can hear now, there's a little bit more of a resonance, resonance just around the area where we're cutting off the sound. And uh, just to make the example a little better, I think I'm going to change our sound here for, um, let's say, just a road sound, for example. And in this example, you should be able to hear what I mean a little better. So here is a little more obvious. You can hear as I'm uh, pulling down the resonance button, the sound is a little more darker, a little more muffled. As I pull it up, we get a little bit of that sort of pingy sound up uh, in the in the, t in the top frequencies or around the frequency where I'm uh, deciding to resonance to resonate. So I can also pull it down further, and now the resonance is going to be around. Um, the resonance point here around the 500k. So basically this is something to play around with to really uh, shape the sound in the way that you you imagine it and in a way so that so, so that it fits into the production that you're making uh, and uh, just uh, works with the other instruments that you're choosing. So the last two things we're going to going to look at in the filter here is the velocity button and the 
key button. So the velocity button that you see here, on this button you can uh, decide how uh, this filter is being uh, affected by the velocity that you play with on your MIDI keyboard. So this is something that's only relevant if you have a MIDI keyboard connected to your uh, computer. And uh, I think the best way is just to show you how it works. So if I go ahead now and uh, I make a cutoff on my road sound here, it sounds like this. And now it doesn't matter if I play hard or soft on the piano, it still sounds the same. But now as I start moving the velocity button um, up here, there should be an, an audible difference. So as you can hear here, when I play very, very soft, the cutoff is uh, working at full volume. But as I start playing louder, the, the filter is changing and, and actually letting through more of the higher frequencies. And then if I, I go ahead and, and turn this uh, wheel the other way, it works in the other direction basically. So now as I play very soft, you will hear a lot of the sound. And as I play harder, the cutoff is gonna go more in effect. So again, this is something to play around with, but it gives you the ability to uh, set your instrument in a way that uh, it's the filter is going to be uh, affected directly by the way that you play your piano. Uh, so if you play softly, for example, it's going to cut off more of the sound, and then if you play louder, it's going to cut off less of the sound. And in that way you can achieve sort of a, a nice dynamic instrument that responds to the way that you play it. So the last button we have here is the key button. And this button, um, sort of like the velocity button, button above, it also adds to the way that you play your MIDI keyboard and the way that that affects the filter here. So basically, basically what happens is that once, when we have our key uh, set all the way to 0% here, the, the sound just sounds like this, with the, the cutoff setting that we put here. But now as I move the key button up to 100%, what's going to happen now is that, is that depending on where on the keyboard I play, if I play the lower registers or the higher registers, the, the amount of cutoff added will change. So, so what you're hearing here is that the sound sounds uh, kind of bright in the higher registers, letting more of the full sound through. And this, then as I go down in the registers, uh, it's, the filter starts really kicking in and cutting off those higher frequencies. So again, this is a, a way that you can uh, tweak the instrument to really respond in the way that you want it to. So now that as I play, it uh, responds in a different way than it would if I would uh, change this setting here. Now it's more even, it doesn't matter where I play on the piano, it gives me the same response. And as I change this, I have to adapt to uh, the, how the instrument uh, is working now, which means that um, when I play down here, um, it's more of a dark sound um, compared to when I play up in the higher registers.